morning. Welcome to Embracing Wisdom with Stacy. That's me. Let's continue talking about these energy centers. Last week's podcast was about the root chakra, the base of our body, the one that governs our connection to our DNA, connection to the bigger, greater tribe that we have. It often relates to safety and security. So pop over to that podcast. I will link it below, but let's travel up the energy centers. This next one's earth element or element that we think about as it correlates is water. Okay. And so this one, this one is orange. The color associated with the second chakra or energy center is orange. And it has to do with our interpersonal relationships. Remember the first one is our relationships with this greater world that we live in. And we start to hone in a little bit. The second one really relates to our interpersonal relationships that can be sibling and parent or siblings or parent and child. It can be intimate relationships, friendships, close working relationships, anything that requires some interpersonal skills. Now, when this one is out of balance, we have a tendency to be extremely needy, extremely focused on other people to the point of codependency. So whole other topic, but we have a tendency to Um, go that way, or we go the other way where we will not bend. Now, remember the element is water. And when we think about how a river flows around the obstacles of life, the boulders, the limbs, the grasses on the edges, the water moves around it. Okay. And so in our interpersonal relationships, it's important to remember that it cannot always be our way. And it cannot always be the other person's way that there's this ebb and flow to it. This energy center also relates much, much, much to creativity. If you think about where it's located in the sacrum, in the pelvis area, this is the womb in which women can carry a child. It's where we can carry ideas, where we can formulate on the creative sense. It doesn't have to mean you're an artist. It just means how do you creatively show up in the world? Maybe you have a gift in decorating or putting yourself together or cooking, anything that requires thought process that's on the creative side is going to be coming from this energy center. Now, when it's out of balance, you're not going to feel creative. You're not going to feel like you're in the flow of life, that things just happen easily for you. You feel stuck. And that's where we start to look at, is this energy center having trouble Often physically, this energy center has to do with pelvic pain, hip pain, low back pain, chronic uh, reproductive stuff. If you're a female, some urinary stuff, like all of that region of our body gets impacted by this. Hips are very important to think about when we think about the second chakra. We have a tendency as females to put all of our emotions down there, which is why women often complain about sacroiliac pain, which is the sacrum joint, because we tend to dump our emotions here because we don't want to expose. We don't want to rock the boat. We just want to carry, carry, carry. So we, in that process of dumping our emotions in, we can start to develop some low back pain and hip pain. It's not always the cause as we talked about in the root chakra, but it can be something to at least look at. The second chakra also has to do with sensuality, sexuality. Um, A lot of money issues come here. Holding on to the tight grip of money doesn't allow the flow of in and out. So we think reciprocity when we're thinking about the second chakra, reciprocity in our relationships, give and take, in the way that we exchange money, in the way that we show up physically with other people, if there's a reciprocity. So when we think about a yoga practice designed for the sacral chakra, there's a lot of flowing. You can just see as I'm speaking about it, there's a lot of flowing. We're not holding a posture and being rigid as we were in the root chakra and really rooting down. We're just learning to move through life. We're moving, learning to move through the obstacles in which life presents to us, whether that's a financial, a relationship, a job change, we're able to just roll with it. The affirmation that goes with this energy center is I feel, I feel, because this is where our emotions start to come into play, how we feel about 
interpersonal relationships, how we feel about money, how we feel about ourselves, our sensuality, our sexuality, how we feel about life in general, the willingness to go with the flow, it all starts to come into this energy center. If we are rigid, we're going to develop some rigidness in our body. So a yoga practice should be designed to balance all seven of the energy centers. But if we're working specifically on a sacral practice, it's going to be a lot of hip openers to kind of get that flowing movement going. A lot of flowing movement. I love to incorporate Tai Chi when I'm thinking about my sacral chakra and feeling a little bit of stuckness in my life. The color is orange. So when we think about gemstones or crystals for this one. I love carnelian. Carnelian is a, a beautiful rich red. I don't have one out here with me, but it's a, a reddish orange, rich, lovely. I have them all over my house. I just love carnelian. I used to wear it. I often wear a carnelian bracelet just to help keep my creativity and my, my flow going. So I love carnelian. And when we look at essential oils for the sacral chakra, we're going to incorporate wild orange, which is a beautiful bright orange aroma but it really helps lend itself to abundance and manifesting goodness in our life and then we want to have cypress cypress is circular it it brings in that flow it's great for circulation it's great for pain but it's great for moving through the stuckness of life i also really love clary sage for the sacral chakra because it has a tendency to physically help support hormones and just sort of the, the good feelings that we have, both male and female, clary sage is also a clearer. So it kind of clears the mud of our energy and helps us to be able to move through that life a little bit better. So those are my probably my top three. I have a few others. I love bergamot is great for the sacral chakra. It's another citrus. It's very bright. It uplifts and reminds you to get out of your own way and to be able to willing to kind of move with people, right? And when we have an interpersonal relationship, parent and child, let's say, oftentimes as parents, we just want to be hard and fast and this is the way it is and the kid pushes back. And so learning to kind of ebb and flow with your relationships with children, especially young adult children or teenagers, will help you so much in life that there is a reciprocity and being willing to listen. When this energy center is not in a good place, we don't listen. It is my way or the highway, and I don't care about anybody. Not healthy. So that's the sacral chakra. Remember, the root is very heavy, dense, grounding relationship to a lot. We're moving up into the sacral where we have a closer circle of relationship. We're starting to feel some of that movement that comes when we relate to other people and how we spend money and how we relate in the world. And then next week, we're going to move up to the third energy center, which is powerful. All right, that's what I got for you. Have a beautiful day. And I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye.